I do quite a bit of portable operation, not so much mobile operation. I tend to park up somewhere or even on the bike, ride out somewhere and do a bit of uh, portable operation. And of course, portable operation means to say you've got to use battery power. Now, a couple of transceivers I use, um, probably the most popular one at the moment is the Zigu X6100, which I've had for about a uh, year and a half now. And also uh, got a Zigu G90, but I tend to use the X6100 because it's got a larger display. Um, it's not so powerful, it's only five watts. But if you use an external supply, you get around about 10 watts, which is much more useful. Well, I say much more, it's another 3 dB, which is worth having. And uh, that means a battery operation. Now, in the past, I've used a Jacquery power supply because it's pretty universal. It'll easily handle power consumptions up to about 10 or 12 amps. It's got a built-in 230 volt socket and uh, it's, it's fine, but it's heavy. And I thought, wait a minute, if I'm doing a lot of operation with my portable radio that has only got a maximum power capability of 10 watts, I don't really want a really heavy battery. So I've recently changed to a much smaller battery, uh, six amp hours. But that actually is more than enough to handle a 10 watt transceiver. And uh, I'll show you in a minute the battery that uh, I've got, uh, that I purchased. They're not overly expensive now, and it is very lightweight. Certainly much lighter than the Jackery power supply that I have been using. But there, are, there is a precaution that you must make, which I'll come back to in a minute. Now, what power supply or what current consumption does a 10 watt transceiver consume? Well, it's interesting actually, <laughs> because if you look at the spec, they say the maximum power consumption is three amps. Well, now, if you have three amps and uh, you multiply that by 12, that's 36 watts. Does a 10 watt transceiver actually consume 36 watts when you're transmitting? No, it doesn't actually. Uh, particularly if you're operating SSB or CW, and I'm surprised that even 3 amps is ever consumed with a 10 watt transceiver because it does, it's, it does suggest that it's rather inefficient. Although, although, I suppose there's a lot of other bits and pieces that are consuming current as well. Anyway, if you actually look at a typical 10 watt transceiver, and let's, let's assume that it really does take 3 amps on peak, I doubt it, it doesn't. It takes three amps on peak, then the average power is going to be half that, which is one and a half amps. But you're not talking all the time, there's breaks in syllables and so forth. So, probably in real terms, you're only actually consuming around about one amp on a typical 10 watt transmission, even on CW, you've still got gaps and so forth. So, one amp is much more realistic, I think. And if you've got a six amp hour battery, then quite clearly, you could potentially have six hours of transmit. And of course, you're not transmitting all the time. You're receiving a lot of the time. On a receive, you're around about half that at least. So you're only, you're only drawing around about, what, 500 milliamps, which is 12 hours reception. So if you put those two figures together, if you put the one amp on transmit and the 500 milliamps on receive and you sort of say, well, how, how much time am I going to transmit and receive? You're probably going to get a good seven, eight hours of operation when you're operating at a 10 watt power level. Which means to say that a six watt, um, sorry, six amp hour battery couldn't be more than enough. It's not expensive and it's quite lightweight. So let me show you the battery that uh, I've been using recently, how I've been charging it, and the precaution that uh, you need to take. Well, this is the battery I chose to use. You can see it's quite compact. And I put the measurements just uh, at the bottom of this screen here. So let's uh, now check out the weight.
Well, it weighs 724 grams, so that's quite reasonable. I want to uh, connect this battery to my transceiver. And if you look on the top of the battery, you've got two terminals. Uh, you could solder directly onto these tags, or you could push um, on uh, tags, or you could put crocodile clips on. Well, I decided I wanted to use crocodile clips because quite clearly a battery like this can be used for a number of different applications. Now, you can buy ready-made DC leads on the internet. Uh, this is one that I ordered. Frankly, it's cheaper to buy them ready-made than to fiddle about trying to make them up. This is a 2.1mm DC lead, and uh, this will match my Zigu X6100 transceiver, and it's quite a popular connection, the 2.1mm lead. Twin, uh, twin cable, red and black, and that's going to go to the battery. Now, what we don't want is a short circuit to take place somewhere on this lead, perhaps inside that plug there, which will cause quite a lot of heat and quite potentially a lot of damage. So we need some protection. And it's essential that protection takes place as close to the battery as possible. In other words, we want to fit a fuse. Now, if you look at the other end of this lead, uh, this lead, that I say I've got on the internet, let's get that out of the way. This lead here has got crocodile clips on. They're only small, but they'll do the job because we're only, we already said we're only going to draw around about uh, an average of an amp, and these leads are okay. So, what we need to do is put a fuse in the positive lead. This is the red positive lead, which will go onto that terminal there. So what I've done is I purchased the, this lead on the internet and the positive lead I cut and inserted this inline fuse. This is one of these cartridge fuses. If you open this up, there's the fuse inside there. So I cut this lead, soldered on this ready-made cartridge fuse, which, or well, not cartridge fuse, but this... Uh, a plug in fuse, which again you can get on the internet. I made a solder connection there and then I put some heat shrink sleeve around there so that uh, it's fully protected and then rejoined the um, crocodile clip at the far end there. So we've now got a fuse in the positive line. This means to say that when we put our lead on there any short circuit, wherever it happens, is going to be protected by that fuse there. Now you obviously need to charge the battery, and there are plenty of chargers again on the uh, internet. Uh, this particular charger I purchased because it will charge a car battery or charge a lithium cell. And uh, I've already checked it out, so charging the battery on my camper van and it worked fine and uh, there's a little button there you press to um, select uh, the two charging modes one thing I do like about this is that um, even without the charger connected to the mains if I put, get these leads on um, if I put that lead on there and that lead on there, it tells me the condition of the battery. So the charge is not connected to the mains at all, but it tells me what the condition of the battery is. And this particular charger comes with two sets of leads. And if you're going to charge the car battery, then you've got the, this alligator DC lead set there. Otherwise, you've got these terminals, which actually quite conveniently hook over the battery there and that's the way I do it, I just hook them on the battery and it charges fine. And with the charger switched on you've got this button here which selects the various modes. But basically it'll charge either lead acid or lithium cell. It's great for 10 watt radios and uh, you can certainly get a day's operation out of uh, the 6 amp hour battery, at least the way I operate anyway. As usual, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget um, 
uh, that uh, here at Waterton Stanton we stock virtually every make of radio you can think of and um, certainly lots and lots of accessories. I think at the last count we had something like about eight or nine thousand items on our website which seems quite amazing. Probably means to say that I don't know some of the things we've got on our website but uh, perhaps it's worth hunting about. Anyway in the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, thanks, thanks for your support on this channel, thank you for subscribing, it doesn't cost you anything, it just means to say you're alerted when the new video comes up, and uh, also thank you for the feedback you give on these videos, because do remember that uh, it's not only me that reads it, everybody that um, uh, goes onto the video can actually click down below the video and see your comments, and some of them are quite helpful, and some of them are quite uh, amusing. Take care, enjoy your radio, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.